session. Okay, again, uh, for those, uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, for those who uh, joined us recently, uh, I don't need to do much that to encourage you to study and to take care of your course. This is an easy course. Uh, you will use the cheat sheet. Uh, but anyhow, sometimes the cheat sheet does not make you to study. Uh, but anyhow, uh, you need to study hard for this course now. For those who could not catch up in the material exam, so many students that they uh, they got zeros and uh, they did not do anything. They, they left blank sometimes. They left the... Uh, or sometimes they just... Uh, Lug in numbers, uh, they don't they don't really realize what are these numbers when they do their questions. Anyhow, we will kind of discuss the the exam, inshallah, uh, uh, and next time, inshallah, next lecture. All right, today we'll do the chapter five. I will continue. We'll finish chapter five, and then inshallah we'll do chapter six uh, next lecture. So chapter five here is still the. Uh, Transmission line parameters, okay, the A, B, C, D parameters. And uh, we are already familiar with the lossless line. What's the lossless line here? Lossless line that we neglect the loss. And why we do lossless line? To simplify the circuit. You see, as a engineer, you always try to do something that is it gives you a hint or it gives you a range of problems. So lossless line does not mean that we don't have in reality, so we don't take it. As engineer, as an engineer, always to have a preliminary data in front of you. So you can compare what the computer gives and what you expect. So when you do lossless lines, is that you simplify the circuit. Then you can predict the uh, the data or the output okay so the, the the results that you are expecting from the computer so please make sure that as a professional engineer you are not just taking the data from the computer as it is you need to think that whether this is as expected or not so how do you know we know by simplifying the circuit so we can do something that is just uh, by hand uh, and, and and work or just a simple program that or just a simple tool that we use for example excel or matlab or something that we can use it and get uh, the data so you are you, you are, so you are expecting by using a large system with a commercial program you are expecting this data and this range so that's why we do lossless lines so this will give you an idea of the data. So what is the lossless line? So a lossless line, what we do, we just neglect the R and G. So there is no losses, real losses, power losses. Okay, there is no power losses. So the power sending equals the power received, the, the power. And as we, uh, we uh, uh, mentioned, the last lecture that z small z is the impedance and small y is the impedance is the susceptance but these are per length per length so they are per meter small z if you multiply this data by the length then it will give you capital z and capital y and we mentioned about the characteristic impedance, which is simply Z over L. Z over L, and this will be in ohm, because this will be ohm, and this will be uh, over ohm, so this will be ohm square. Ohm square, square root of ohm square give you ohm. So the, the units of the characteristic impedance is ohm. The units, of the propagation constant is just per meter. Why? Because these are z per meter 
which is ohm per meter times Simmons per meter. So this is per meter square. Okay, so this is square root of one over meter square. Meter square. So this gives you per meter. Okay, which is like this meter to the power of minus two. Then this will be per meter. So the propagation constant is the number per meter. And because we neglected the real, the R and G, the resistance, therefore, the, we have only inductance and capacitance. So that is the J omega LC, which is J beta instead of alpha plus J beta. So this will be just the imaginary part. Remember, we always say that you cannot neglect X in the transmission line. We can neglect R, no problem. Okay, X is higher than R in transmission lines. That's usually about 10 times or five times. So it depends, but it is really higher than R. So that's okay. So we can neglect R. That's why we are simplifying the circuit. So we make it easy to do the to uh, to solve the circuit. So now we know why we're doing lossless lines. Okay, to simplify the circuit. All right, and then we have this one. So the characteristic of this here is L over C. Remember now L over C, which is what Z over Y. So commonly uh, called surge impedance. Characteristic impedance called sur surge impedance for a lossless line. And you had this if you take the communications course example. So we have the surge impedance for a lossless line. Uh, same thing here for characteristic impedance, we call surge impedance. Lines of pure real, that is resistive, because now it becomes what? The surge impedance becomes ohm, real part. So this is a real, pure real, this is a number. A number in ohm. So it's not complex. It's not a complex number. Okay. Because we are dividing a imaginary part over a imaginary part. So it will give you just a pure real number. The propagation constant is the imaginary part of it. Is the pure imaginary, pure imaginary, as you can see here, J beta. Okay. So this is J beta uh, per meter. So this is a pure imaginary, is the propagation constant, and the surge impedance or characteristic impedance is pure real. So how to find the ABCD parameters? Remember now we will use also ABCD parameters in chapter seven. Okay, so it's very important to understand how to determine ABCD parameters for a lossless line. So we used, we already determined that the cosine hyperbolic, the, okay, so we already determined the A and D, et cetera. So this will be just cosine beta because what? Cosine beta X. Remember now X is the length. Because beta is per meter. Beta is per meter. Here we are. You see, I'm explaining this, and we still now have students that they do not really, they will, they may not, uh, or they don't understand, or they don't listen to the to the, to the lecture. So we are explaining this and repeating ourselves on this, and we still have the just the students, they just plug in their numbers there without really realizing what they're doing. So this is beta, that's why we, we, we need to multiply the beta by x, and x is the length of the what? Of the conductor, the length. Okay, so this will be cosine beta x. And j the sine hyperbolic, this will be j sine beta x. Okay, sine hyperbolic, sine beta x. Then we can find the A, B, C, D. It's simple. 
at the ABCD. You see now it becomes becomes you don't have the what the sign hyperbolic etc. That's why we simplify to just sign. See this is just sign uh, an angle. And these are a radiant. Okay, so don't forget to change your your uh, uh, settings when you do sine and cosine with these numbers into a radian. So these numbers are radian, not a degree. Okay, so make sure these are a radian when you change. I don't want to listen then what we uh, uh, I forgot, etc. So make sure that you. It's okay. So we have A, B, C, D. Okay, so that's it. Remember, now we already de determined that we will say equivalent pi circuit. This is for long transmission line. And we're still talking about long transmission line, but this is lossless. So R and G are equal zero. And for long transmission line, which is equivalent pi circuit, we have Y prime over two here, and Y prime over two, and Z prime. And we already mentioned last lecture that Z prime is simply Z times this number. Here. So we have Z characteristic impedance times J. So this will be J X prime. So there is a, a correction factor when we did lossy lines last lecture. We did lossy lines that was a correction factor F1 and F2. So please review these uh, lectures. Okay, and Y prime is simply this part here. So this we call it C prime here. But C prime you will not be given. You will be given what? You will be given C of the transmission line. So therefore, you need to, to do this part first. Okay? To, to do th this part first. And remember now we... For, we neglect that, we do not neglect, but we, because we neglected the real part of the complex number, then we just determine tan instead of tan hyperbolic. It becomes now easy. Tan. Uh, and that's it. So you will get these. So please, when you do, you don't do this exactly J omega, and then you will put C. This is C prime. Talking about this one. C prime. So C prime, so you need to do this part here. And this will be J omega C prime, uh, C prime over two, which is this actually, simply is this one, Y prime over two. Why is Y prime? So we divided the Y into right and left for the transmission line. So we call it Y over two. While Z, you don't call it Z prime over two, because Z is the transmission line impedance. It's only one. All right, so we have y, y. So therefore, we constructed the circuit here with these numbers. After we construct the circuit, then we can determine the A, B, C, D parameters. Another terminology here we want you to do is the wavelength. The wavelength also you had this in uh, another course in communications or electromagnetics. What is a wavelength? A wavelength is the distance required to do what? To change the phase of what? Of the voltage or current by 360 degree. So it comes back to it. So be, why? Because the, remember now, as go as you go on the on the conductor, the transmission line, as you go on, the phase increases, the angle increases. Okay, close to the sending end, for example, you will have, or if you go, for example, from the from the from the starting. It depends where is your reference. If your reference is the, is the uh, load, for example, so that's a zero degree. And then as you go to the sending end, by the line, the, the angle increases. The angle increases. Okay. Then what we have here, we thought of, until the angle of voltage or current, one of them changes into 360 degrees, so back to to the original now to zero for example so it becomes maybe five or minus five and then minus ten and minus and then becomes back to zero so that's what we call it the wavelength distance required so how much distance required for these uh, changes okay 
So V of X and I X change phase by two pi radians. So that is two pi or 360 degree. When X equals two over pi over beta, two pi over beta, two pi over beta from here. So pi equals what? The you know, wavelength. We can calculate the wavelength by this part here. So lambda, lambda equals two pi over beta. So we know two pi and we know beta. So we calculated beta and we calculated pi, which is this part here, if you want to calculate it. So this is one over F LC. Simply is the frequency one over F LC. So as you increase the frequency, the wavelength will decrease from here. Okay. Victor. All right. Yes. It's still just one question uh, uh, regarding the previous slide. Um, I missed w what was the C prime that you talked about. C prime is simply Y prime over two. So we say C prime over two, this is from here, this is C prime. Okay, this is J omega over two, this is J omega over two. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is L, this is L. Okay, this is L. So therefore, you found this, uh, the, you do all the, 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 the equation, this one here. Okay, then you will get it as C prime. So this simply is this part here. Okay, so because this will be just the, because we neglected G, G the conductance. So this becomes C prime. Okay, so C prime. So what you will be given, you will be given again, you will be given only the, the capacitance of the transmission line per unit length. Therefore, what you will do, you will multiply by the, by the unit length. Okay, by the length, how much, how much length. So the unit length by meter, then you multiply by, by how many maybe kilometers. Or per kilometer, you multiply by kilometers, and so on. Okay, so therefore you will get this part here. Then you call it C prime. So, okay. And why is C prime? Why don't we have wavelength for lossy transmission lines? No, you will have wavelength for any any transmission lines. Why not wavelength? You have the wavelength as 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 the degree, but this takes so much, uh, and five thousand kilometers, something like. So wavelength is not, it will not actually come in reality. You have, it takes 5,000 kilometers, 6,000 kilometers, okay, to change. You see, that's all the way uh, to change it to back to zero, or back to 360 degree. It takes so much kilometers, maybe 5,000 kilometers to change. If we leave it, but, we, but in reality, we don't leave it like this. We don't leave the, the, the phase to go like this. Okay, we don't leave the phase in reality. We don't feel the phase. We, we want to correct the phase. So how do we correct the phase? We stop in a, a substation there. Okay, so stop in a substation there and then boost again instead of of uh, of the phase shift. So we can make also phase shifts. So we can boost the the, the voltage again by tra another transformer. So we bring it up. Okay. The connection we need 5,000 kilometers. Five from here to Jeddah is just 1,000 kilometers. You see now 5,000, you reach uh, Europe. One transmission line goes to Europe, comes 1,000 kilometers uh, for one transmission line. Okay, so you will not reach. Anyhow, okay, so this is surge impedance loading. Now we have surge impedance Z. And we have what's called surge impedance loading. Surge impedance loading is simply the characteristic impedance here. Okay. It's the power delivered by a lossless line to a load resistance equal to the surge impedance. So we call it surge impedance loading that the power delivered to the surge impedance or the power delivered to a load resistance equal to the surge impedance. So the load resistance, this load here, equal to the surge impedance. The impedance of the load 
equals the impedance of the line. What's this? Select Thevenin's theorem. You get the maximum power when the load impedance equals the transmission line uh, impedance. If you recall surge impedance loading power delivered by a lossless line to a load resistance equal to the surge impedance. So when this one here surge impedance, the load equal the surge impedance, then we get it, we call surge impedance loading. And this is the uh, maximum that we can get. So with the with the voltage, now what we need to know in here, with this is the V of X, now remember X is the length. So V of one kilometer, two kilometer, at what we want to find the voltage at what point? This is what we uh, X is here. At what length? Maybe at one kilometer, we want to find the voltage. And then maybe at five kilometers, we want to find the voltage. So, so, we call it. so therefore, this will just multiply by the length x here and also x here. Okay, And then multiply by vr, ir. So this is just simply a circuit here. Uh, Kirchhoff voltage uh, loop, vr plus gs. Uh, all right, and then this is the I. I is simply uh, V R over Z because we want I here. So this is simply V ohms law, ohms law, V over Z. And this is ampere in ampere. The surge impedance loading here is simply. P plus Jx, which is what V I conjugate times I. So V times I conjugate. So I, I conjugate means that you do the, the, the minus the angle. Uh, okay, so and this after all these uh, simplifications here, multiplication, then you will get this part. V square over Z C. Z C is a characteristic impedance or surge impedance for a lossless line. A lossy line we call it a characteristic impedance. For lossless, the same actually, but we call it surge impedance. So it's V square over Z. So that's V over Z times V, which is V over Z times. So that's why V square over Z. So that's the real power flow along the lossless line remains constant. Important to know these. Okay, so the real power flow remains constant. So there is no real pa uh, power losses. That's why it will give you uh, it will give you a prediction that what you are expecting of the power. So no problem. The, then you will have maybe ten percent or five percent. So but but then you can compare your results with the results that you get from the uh, program. So the sending is. The reactive power flow is zero. No reactive power flow. Okay. The reactive power. So this is the real power flow. Why? Because the surge will be the zero. V square over Z. So this is only a number. All right. Now I want to, I would like you to do this voltage profile to understand this voltage profile. First of all, Vs. Vs equals Vr. Vs, the sending end equals the receiving end. How do we know? Because there is no voltage drop. Because there is no voltage profile for it. So the V sending equals V receiving. Yes, yeah, uh, see it. Uh, okay. Sorry, Dr. Biden. Now, this is this. Okay. So this is a sending end equals a receiving end. This we call surge impedance loading. So, okay. Now, if there is no load, we remove the load. The voltage at the load, at no load there, the voltage at the load will be higher than the sending end. So we call it no load voltage. So therefore, we go no load voltage. Remember now here. This is called no load. Why no load? The, well, the voltage at the load will be higher than the voltage at the sending end. This is a lightly loaded condition. This is a normal case, by the way, uh, in Qatar, for example. In Qatar, in winter, 
In winter, the, no, the lightly loaded conditions, because we don't use AC that much, uh, therefore we don't need uh, that much load. Then the load at the sending end, at the customer there is higher than the sending end. So what they do, instead of having capacitors in, in summer, they do capacitor for compensation, we do inductor for compensation. So in winter, in Qatar, we install cap inductors, okay? So we call it reactive inductors. So we're, we're reactive. So we, we compensation, but not by capacitor, compensation by inductors. Where we put these inductors? At the substations. So there are inductors to do what? To absorb reactive power, because the reactive power is high. That's why the load becomes high at the, at the receiving end. The reactive power of talking about Qatar power system. Okay. Uh, why? Because the system is designed to meet, why we have this case, the system is designed to meet the heavy load in summer. So Kahrama made the system that you, it, it supplies to you at heavy load, okay, in summer. When the system is designed to have the heavy load, and in winter, you only consume one third by the way of the load. In winter, the consumption of electricity is about one third, one over three, only one third. What is what you consume in summer? Only one third. So the transmission line, the cables, especially at the underground cables, there have lightly loaded conditions. The, the, the current is very small current. Therefore, they inject reactive power. So the voltage becomes high. Okay, because they inject reactive. Therefore, we need inductors to absorb this. Remember now, we don't want the voltage to be higher than a certain uh, uh, value, for example, 5% or so, plus minus 5%. For higher transmission line, we need only 3, 3%, not always 10%, or 5%. So it's only about 3% if we talk about 220 kilovolts, etc. So the range is about 3%. Anyhow, so we have no load, therefore it's simply that the voltage will go up. At full load, it's simply also the voltage will go down. Here we are. Okay, it simply will go down as where, as you go from the sending end. Now we go from the sending end, the voltage will go down by the time as it reaches to the receiving end, the voltage will go down. Short circuit, what does, what does mean short circuit? That the load becomes zero. The impedance becomes zero, short. Short, you made a short. The load is shorted. Shorted, the impedance becomes zero. Therefore, the voltage at the impedance becomes zero, becomes zero. At x equals zero. At x equals, now, x, this x here is the length. Huh? Not X is, uh, is reacts, but uh, at, at zero, so therefore, that's why we have this X equals L, X equals zero. So X here is the length. So this here becomes zero. So the voltage becomes zero on the loop. Uh, okay, the voltage becomes zero. The current is very high. At short circuit, the current is very high and the voltage is zero. Why the voltage is zero? Because we have it like this. R zero, I, very high, I times zero. This is very high current of the short. That's why it's short. You will show it, show it, show it, man, I'm short. So I times zero. This is high, but this is zero. So this will be zero. So the voltage equals I times zero. Therefore, the voltage here at the receiving end becomes zero at short circuit. Okay. At short circuit becomes zero. At full load becomes uh, lower. No load becomes higher. And they all started from where? From the sending end, from what the same point here. As you go with the line there, 
But if the surge will be this loading, the voltage is flat. So what does it mean? It means that we assume that the voltage sending end equals the receiving end. That's what our assumption is. Now that's why we make it easy for us to calculate. So we say, okay, there is no, no change in voltage. Again, now as an engineer, that's what you need to, to you are not a data entry uh, person. You are an engineer. You need to simplify, always simplify things there. Okay, what, what happened if I, if I assume this equals this one? Because at the end, there may be 5% uh, difference. That's okay. So then you will get uh, an estimated value. Uh, so you know the results, so you can determine, you analyze the results, what you get. All right, so this is what the code voltage profile for a lossless line. Before the surge impedance. Uh, what for uncompensated, now here, here we are, you can now determine what we mean by uncompensated lossless line. That means we did not we did not modify anything as it is, uncompensated. Okay, we did not do anything there. So the vault, we let the voltage to sag down, uncompensated. Or we let the voltage to go up at the no load for a length, uh, length up to a quarter of a wavelength, quarter of a wavelength. So we are familiar now with the quarter of a wavelength. So that's what about uh, quarter of a wavelength. Familiar now with the, with the wavelength. Wavelength becomes about 5,000 kilometers. All right, so voltage profile that is simply here. What uh, we uh, know at no load, we are IR at no load. There's the IR no load is zero. Of course, there's no current. No load means there's no current. So therefore, the V no load becomes this part. The no load voltage increases from Vs at the end to Vr no load at the receiving end. The voltage profile at this is flat. That's what just we explained here for a short circuit. V uh, receiving at short circuit becomes zero and V sending becomes this part. So we have a V sending, but the, we have a value at the sending end and we have zero value at the receiving end. For what for a short circuit? Remember, this is current here will be high at short circuit. So we have a value here and also a value. The voltage decreases from Vs at the sending end and to Vr at the receiving end. And this is, of course, we just explained. And the full load voltage profile, which depends on the specification of the full load current, lies above the short circuit voltage profile, the short circuit profile which is the full load so the full load lies above this one here as you can see this is the full load and this is the short circuit so just remember these uh, voltage profiles by the way in the exam you will do as i mentioned earlier you will do two parts the first part is that you do not have only your pen there is nothing else, there is no calculator, nothing, only your pen. For example, I will ask you to draw the voltage profile for a lossless line. At no load, surge impedance loading, full load, at short circuit. Then you will just draw this part. That's what we're doing now. We are really doing a review for the final exam and also giving the lecture. This may be the best to understand and to focus rather than just to stay, uh, staying for the last week and then we give you a review it cannot be so this is a review for you what kind of questions will be in the exam draw the voltage profile so you need to know how to draw a voltage profile for this and these are the interview questions so you cannot say that okay i need the calculator what you will do with the calculator okay or a cheat sheet the second part of the exam, after you submit the first part, which you have nothing there, no cheat sheet, then you will have a cheat sheet. Maybe we'll make it two or three cheat sheets. Then we can discuss actually how many papers you need. Okay, there is no 
that's okay. So you can bring all your, instead of squeezing all your information in one sheet, we can give you maybe two or three sheets. You can write uh, whatever you want. Okay. Uh, so it's a kind of that you summarize. That's why I'm doing actually a cheat sheet. So you can a kind of summarize rather than uh, than open book. Because from my experience, open book students did not do well. They think that everything is in the book, and then when they when they solve the exam, they spend so much time looking at the book there to find ways. So try to summarize, and then you will know what summarize. What summarize problem solving. So the second part will be solving problems. That's what you have in the. But the first part will be multiple choice, will be draw the filter diagram, draw the voltage profile, okay, like interview questions. Halloween. I'm telling you what, what will be in the exam. Okay, so you focus, so study smart, hard and smart. All right, so this is the lossless slide. Simply this one here also, uh, simple, the same thing here, we can't have it with the, with the real power delivered is the power delivered, the sending end equal the receiving end, the real power. And the real power is given like this. The receiving power is simply VR times VS over X prime. The receiving end time is the sending end over the impedance in between. This will give the sign delta. What is delta? Delta is the angle between the receiving end and the sending end. So the angle between these voltages, between, okay? It's not, okay, if, if VR is assumed to be zero and VS becomes delta, then it's delta. But if VR is five degree and VS is maybe two degree, then delta will be three degree. Sine delta. So this is the difference. Delta is the difference between the voltages. And this basically is the real part of this part here. So okay, so this is where we get this one from here, from this part. Here. So we go all the way from how we, we solve it until we come to this equation and then we get just the real part of it becomes VR, V sending this part here. Okay, so this is the real part. The other is the imaginary part of it. So the real part is the real, the real power delivered. You see now how we simplified things in there. We just, we have this equation, VR, VS over X. Instead of having this, that's why we do most of the and you and you will get results that is close to uh, to the reality. Okay, maybe ten percent on uh, plus minus. And that's it. Now, steady state stability limit. This is a very important topic. There is a a course called steady state stability. Of course, by itself, called stability. Power system stability. Okay, power system stability, not, not necessarily steady state, but okay, we call it power system stability. Now, what do we mean by stability here? Is that it does not reach the maximum. So all our work should be here. We call it stable system. So we want to get at this point here. Remember now, what does it, what does this mean? Actually, uh, so, uh, now as you go with the delta here, delta is is delta ninety. As you go in here, the real power will be the, so. What you are control, controlling is the delta. Until you become delta ninety, this becomes maximum. So it's V S V R over X. So this is the maximum here. And then if you is the current the power will be decreased. The power will be decreased if you increase the current. So we want to increase uh, the current in between. Therefore, you need more power. Real power delivered by a lossless line. This is a voltage angle across the line. The voltage angle across the line. 
So that we say voltage angle is between the S and the R. Until it becomes 90 degree, then becomes maximum. So the, the angle increased. So therefore, the, the real power will be increased as you go on until it becomes 90. Because sine 90 is 1. Sine 90 becomes 1. Therefore, B maximum, where are uh, sine 90? So we're talking about this part. Okay, this part here. So we take the power now. This is the power. If you are if you're asked just to find the power, you need to use this equation. Vr, Vs over x prime sine delta. And we determine what is x prime. So not x, x prime. Okay, it comes from what? Okay, x prime comes from z prime. Uh, okay, this sign, then this is the power you will use. But to find the maximum steady state stability limit, you need to change what? You need to change the delta now, sign delta until it becomes 90. So when will this be maximum? This will be maximum when sine delta equals one. When sine delta equals one. When will sine delta become one? When delta becomes 90. That's the idea about this. Okay. And again, now what is X prime? X prime, you get it from Z prime. And what is Z prime? Z prime is simply the characteristic impedance times sine beta L. So determine beta and L, as we mentioned before, how you determine. So it's simple that you have these equations. Okay. Then this is maximum. This is enough. If you're asked to find the power, you should not use this part here. You should use the sine delta sine 90 so you need to know the angle between them and between s and r and then you find the delta if not then then you need to if, if you are asking the maximum then you need to find the maximum okay i will ask you please to register for attendance it's very important and i will register you now for the past attendance i will post your past attendance i did not post it okay but you need to register for today and then i will post for the last lecture Okay, where are we now? I'm just waiting for the attendance to come. It takes uh, loading your, your course or all that. Okay, I will just click check in, start checking here. Okay, I will stop recording because you need to go now. Stop recording. Unless you have a question here, we can discuss your, uh, your questions here before I stop recording. 